Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to First United Church this wonderful Sunday morning as we gather for worship and time of fellowship together. We gather together with a word of welcome, but we also begin with some announcements as we are getting ready to begin our day. Are there announcements that we would like to share with one another? Caroline, has one back there. Caroline all the way. This is a reminder to add council. We meet at seven o'clock on Tuesday. And remember to bring your ingredients for apple cider so we can work as a team to have a delicious drink. Thank you. Thank you, Carol Ann. Other announcements that we have to be greeted with this morning? I have a couple, and maybe that'll spur on some and some other people, but next Sunday is our Hanging of the Greens after the worship service next Sunday. So we'll have all the materials down for us to put up our wonderful Christmas greens for the Christmas season and our other decorations. So please, right after the service, help out with that, those who can. Many, <clears throat> excuse me, many hands makes light work, and so the more the merrier. And then I know right after that, that if Shelly Lindenfelser were here, she would want to announce that we are going to be having a meeting about our planned upcoming mission trip in 2025. And so if you are planning on being a part of that mission or going on that mission trip to plan on attending that meeting as well. That's all next Sunday after the service. And of course, next Sunday is our Thanksgiving Reign of Christ Sunday, and that's going to signal to us that the following week we will begin Advent. So it's here, folks. We are steaming our way towards it, full bore. Other announcements that I may be spurred in, somebody? Puzzle Palooza on Wednesday. Thank you, Prescott. Yes. Wednesday night, starting at 6 p.m. in the Fellowship Hall, we're going to have Puzzle Palooza. And so it's an intergenerational opportunity for kids and adults of any age and size and shape to come and put together sizes and shapes. And so we will have a fun puzzle night and some, uh, some celebration around that. And it's a potluck, so please bring a dish to share. And we will have a fun time communing together and building puzzles and other things. Other announcements for us to share in today before we get started with our worship. I just want to announce that on the round oak table, just past Carol Ann. Carol Ann, you want to wave so everyone knows where we're talking about? Do your best Vanna White impersonation, Carol Ann. There we go. By the oak table back there is the sign-up sheets for being greeters or doing fellowship. And so if you want to be involved in that, please sign up. And if you've never done it before in your life, if you've never plugged in a coffee maker before in your life or know how to do that, we have people who've done it many times. And so we can get you set up with somebody who really knows the routine and can help you do that. Or if you've never greeted somebody, I first off feel sorry for you, but if you've never greeted anybody, then we have people that can teach you how to say hello and greet somebody as well. Um, but we have wonderful opportunities to volunteer in this church. And again, this church exists through our volunteerism. My last announcement to make this morning is I'm going to announce this again is that on the credenza in the back, there are these blue prayer cards that say prayer request at the top. And you can date it, and you can write your prayer request on here, and you can ask for it to be either included in Sunday prayers or confidential so that only I see it, or that you want me to contact you. You can have this in that basket back there, and you can place it in there, and I will check the basket every Sunday before the service to see if there are any for that Sunday. And so if you put one in there, then I, I'll, I'm telling you, I will check the basket. It will be seen. But another reason I want to mention this is that we have insert in your program. And in your program, we list people that we want to pray for in there. We, every month or so, it's been a little bit longer because I didn't want to do it without making an announcement about it. But every month or so, 
We will take the names off that list and we will continue to pray for them if you request that we continue to pray for them. But in order that so our list doesn't grow to be the whole insert, we need to pare it down from time to time, not that we don't want to be praying for our loved ones. So this is a great way to say, please keep my loved one's name on the Sunday prayer list. Another great way to do that. Other announcements, perhaps? All right, then I'll just finish announcements by saying thank you. Thank you to Madeline for running the microphone around. Thanks, Kathy, for being here, playing the Tickle in the Ivories today, for Diana Song leading us this morning, for Prescott and Amanda back in the booth, and for all of the many volunteers that you've met this morning. Our gathering hymn today is Just a Little Talk with Jesus. It's from the Worship and Song Hymnal, which is the small green hymnal in or around your seat, number 3107, and the words will be on the screen. But this is new for us, and it's kind of a jumpy one a little bit, so, uh, so Kathy's going to play through it once for us so we can get the rhythm, and then we'll join in. But this is our welcoming hymn, Just a Little Talk with Jesus.
Next time we do that, we're going to be standing and clapping and a hooting and a hollering. Great job. Give yourselves a round of applause. Would you please rise now as you're able in mind, body, or spirit, and let us join in our call to worship together. Let us enter and make ourselves ready for worship. Let us let go and let God. Let us enter and open our hearts to transformation and renewal. Make us ready to receive you, Holy One. Let us enter and give glory to our God. We rejoice in praise, lifting the name of our Creator on high. Let's try that one one more time. See, there's an exclamation mark at the end of that phrase. That means that we are going to say it with exclamation. Let's try it again. We rejoice in praise, lifting the name of our Creator on high. Thank you. Amen. Our opening prayer is adapted from the message version. And it's from 1 Samuel chapter 2, verses 1 through 10. Let us pray this opening prayer. This is actually Hannah's prayer from 1 Samuel. She had never been able to have kids, and eventually she prays to the Lord, and she's able to have children, and God blesses her. And this is her prayer, praying out and rejoicing to God. And so let us pray in unison with Hannah. I am bursting with God news. I am walking on air. Those who laughed at me have not succeeded. I am dancing my salvation. Nothing and no one is holy like God. No mountain is even like our God. We dare not talk pretentiously, not a word of boasting ever, for God knows what is what. God takes the measure of everything that happens. The strong are smashed to pieces, while the weak are infused with fresh strength. God brings death, and God brings life, takes down to the grave, and raises up. God puts poor people on their feet again, and rekindles burned out lives with fresh hope, restoring dignity and respect to their lives, granting them a place in the sun. God protectively cares for the faithful, step by step, but leaves the wicked to stumble in the dark. No one makes it in this life by sheer muscle. God will set things right all over the earth. Amen. Our next hymn is My Soul Gives Glory to My God in the New Century Hymnal, the big black one in or around your seat. Number 119, My Soul Gives Glory to My God. My soul gives glory to my God, my heart pours out its praise. God lifted up my loneliness in many marvelous ways. My God has done Oh, 
seated. We now come to a time of confession. Confession is important in our faith journey as we confess our individual sins and our communal sins, the things we know we have done and the things that we do not know we have done. So let us pray this prayer of confession together. Our Redeemer, we call upon you to make all things new. We confess that we compromise your good news and settle for a comfortable gospel rather than embrace the radical love, hospitality, and inclusion of your reign. We have been satisfied with a faith that conforms to the world rather than one that challenges the wicked systems and evil ways that lead us astray. Forgive us for our focus on our own survival and pleasure while your creation perishes all around us. Forgive us for taking your grace for granted and for not loving one another as you have loved us. By your mercy, And with repentant hearts we pray. Amen. And hear now these words of assurance. God does more than we can ever imagine. And God is more than we can ever fathom. God takes us, the undeserved, the sinners, those who have done nothing worthy of unconditional love or grace, and loves us into wholeness. What the world would toss away, God welcomes home. You, me, everyone. Amen. And let us rise and share our wholeness, God's peace, with one another.
What a wonderful way for us to gather in the peace of Christ as we come together. And as we share God's peace near and afar, we just definitely pray prayers of peace for those gathering on Zoom or watching on YouTube or wherever we gather, whether here or away. As we continue in our worship this morning, we'll have Holy Scripture read for us by Adam this morning. Thank you, Adam. First reading is Daniel chapter 12, verses 1 through 3. At that time, Michael, the great prince, the protector of your people, shall arise, and there shall be a time of anguish such as never occurred since nations first came into existence. But at that time, your people shall be delivered, everyone who is found written in the book. Many of those who slept in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Those who are wise shall shine like the brightness of the sky, and those who lead to many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. The second reading is Hebrews 10, 11 through 14, and 19 through 25. And every priest stands day after day at his service, offering again and again the same sacrifices that can never take away sins. But when Christ has offered for all time a single sacrifice for sins, he sat down at the right hand of God, and since then has been waiting until his enemies would be made footstools for his feet. For a single offering he has perfected for all those who are sanctified. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, since we have confidence to enter the sanctuary by the blood of Jesus, by the new and living way that he opened for us through the curtain, that is through his flesh, and since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us approach with a true heart and full assurance of faith, with our hearts sprinkled clean from the evil consciousness and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast to the confessions of our hope without wavering, for he who has promised is faithful. And let us consider how to provoke one another to love and to good deeds, not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. Is there something going on? It's time for the children's message. What's your message for people today? <laughs> well, good morning. I've got something. I've got something. A little hands-on today. What is it? What is it? All right. How's that look? That's the message. Everyone, hot round of applause for our children. No, no. no. <laughs> All right. Here's what I want us to do. I want us to build something. Whatever you want to build, but everyone gets to take a block or two, and, and let's just build something. But let's build it together. It's got to be together, whatever it is, okay? What's that? And don't take too long. We're just going to build it up here. All right. We're building, it looks like a fence or a wall of some sort. All right, now stand up and stand behind it so everyone can see what you built. What did you build? A wall. A wall, you think? Yes. Uh-huh. A wall. Okay. Now, what if someone came along? Do you think this wall is going to stand up to someone walking through it? No. Let's try it. No. No, they don't think that stood up. All right, let's try building something different than a wall, all right? Get in, let's build something different than a wall now. Oh, uh, you might want to lay them a different way for a time. Yeah, I'm gonna add a block to this too. This is definitely gonna hold, I think. It is definitely gonna hold when somebody walks. Definitely gonna hold, right? All right, let's try, no, 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 oh, 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 oh. Just one. Oh, no, 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 no. All right. All right, let's try building something else other than a wall. We tried a wall. We tried a tower. Let's try something else. I don't know. Let's try something. Yeah. 
Oh, okay. Okay, now we're building a bridge. All right. I, I wouldn't recommend walking on it. I don't think these are those kind of bricks. They seemed pretty light to me. So what do we think? Is this going to hold? It would possibly hold if you walked over it, right? Mm -hmm. Is it going to hold, though, say, if I went like, oh, boy. Oh, no. Oh, no. What happened? All right, so bring the blocks back in. Yeah. And let's just have them here in the center. What did we see that we, no matter what we built, what happened today? It could be broken, right? It could be destroyed. It could fall. Even if we built a very simple structure of just a brick on the ground, that could be moved out of the way, right? Well, what I did is I wanted to show this to you as a physical demonstration of is that sometimes we put a lot of faith in our lives in the things that we can build or create and yet even the things that we can build or create, do they last forever? No. No. They don't last forever. And I'm wearing How about us? Do you think we will last forever? No. No, eventually our bodies, even though they're such a great creation by God, right? Such a great creation by God, right? <laughs> great creation by God, right here. <laughs> even they will perish, right? But you know what? There is something inside of us that's eternal. What's that? Our soul? Yeah. And where is our soul connected? Our hearts? And who made our soul and gave us life? God. So there is this internal spark within us. That no matter what we build or what comes in our world or no matter if we, as we like to say, live or die, grow or don't, no matter how many years we have or how many years we don't, we have this eternal spark, this great light within us. And can that be destroyed? That can't be destroyed? What if I took a wrecking ball to it? Can't be destroyed? What if I was no longer on this earth? No. Can't be destroyed? So God's love in our hearts can never be destroyed. Yeah. Amen? 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 Let us say a prayer together here. Blessed God, thank you for our children. God, we love our structures in our world, but we know that they are temporary. Thank you for the eternal, the God spark within us, the love in our hearts, God which cannot be destroyed. May we celebrate that. May we share that. May we grow that love. In your son's holy name we pray. Amen. How about a round of applause for our kiddos now? Thanks, kiddos. I guess they leave me to do the cleanup. Huh? Our gospel reading today comes from the book of Mark, chapter 13, verses 1 through 8. Hear these words as Jesus was teaching his disciples. As Jesus came out of the temple, one of his disciples said to him, Look, teacher, what large stones and what large buildings. Then Jesus asked him, Do you see these great buildings? Not one stone will be left here upon another. All will be thrown down. When he was sitting on the Mount of Olives opposite the temple, Peter, James, John, and Andrew asked him privately, Tell us, when will this be? And what will be the sign that all of these things are accomplished? Then Jesus began to say to them, Beware that no one leads you astray. Many will come in my name and say, I am he, and they will lead many astray. When you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be alarmed. 
This must take place, but the end is still to come. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places and there will be famines. This is but the beginning of the birth pains. The word of our Lord. Will you please pray with me? Blessed God, as we gather this morning, open our hearts and our ears to that message that you long for us to hear, that we would be open to receive and open to share. In your blessed name and for your glory we pray. Amen. Provoked to love. We're going to talk about being provoked to love in just a second, but I want to do a practice that's always dangerous for a pastor to do, but I'd like us to close our eyes. And when you close your eyes, what I'd like you to imagine is the greatest spectacle you've ever seen that was made by humanity. Maybe it's the Colosseum, maybe it's the Sears Tower, or maybe it's New York City, maybe it's something very simple. But imagine the greatest thing that you've ever seen that was made by human hands. And then imagine it destroyed and gone. Okay, we can open our eyes. I went through this little practice because this gospel of Mark that we just heard, Mark is what's called an apocalyptic Jew. And so he's writing from a standpoint where Jesus is presenting the gospel message as one of these end times. The end times are about to happen. And what Jesus is actually predicting in this scenario is the destruction of the temple in Jerusalem. And the temple in Jerusalem would be just as magnificent and gorgeous and beautiful as any of the things that we have just imagined. And what will happen in a few decades after Jesus' death is that the Jews will revolt and Rome will come in and level it to the ground. Everything. Every last stone, till it's what we see today or what's left today if you've ever visited modern Israel. The point being that what Jesus is talking about when he is telling the disciples that they are celebrating these wonderful, huge, large stones and we have all seen amazing things that can be created by human hands and we've all, we've all experienced awe at those things. But what Jesus is telling the disciples is that we have gone astray in terms of where our focus is. Our focus should not be on, wow, look at these large stones. Our focus should not be on our holy worship and how good we can be holy. Our focus should not be on how do we separate ourselves to make sure that we remain clean and pure and whole as a people. Jesus' whole ministry and mission was to talk to the Jews and say, we need to change. We need to be more open and more loving and more forgiving and more grace-filled and not just stuck in our temple, but going out to the sides, to the limited, the people that need our help, out to the margins and the marginalized. And the disciples, when they're in Jerusalem, which is where they are now, in the story where we find Mark, are just amazed at all of the things around them. And Jesus is trying to bring their focus back to what is important. And that's God's love. See, just as the Jews had gone astray, they were focusing on all of these other things. And what I feel Jesus is calling them to and is calling us to is to be provoked to love. You may have heard that little phrase at the end of the reading in Hebrews, but we should be provoked to love one another. Provoked 
is a verb that comes out of the verb, the combination of, in ancient Latin, vocare, which is to call, and pro, which is forth. So literally, provoke is to call forth. Now, we think of provocation in our modern sense in a negative light. We think that we are being provoked and that it has this negative connotation to it. But the word in and of itself is innocent. It's to be called forth. So why can we not be provoked to love? That is what God is calling us forth to do. We should be provoked to love. We should be called forth out of our comfort, out of our places, out of wherever we are to love. We should be called forth out of our buildings, out of our structures, out of all the things that we think are these magnificent, wonderful things that we have created to love. We should be called forth out of our man-made structures, whether that's gender, whether that's system, whether that's economics, whether that's party, whether that's whatever it is, we should be called forth out of everything to share God's love. We know this, don't we, people? We know this in our hearts of hearts. Hearing me say it may be either convicting or maybe you don't want to hear it, so you might be tuning me out, or maybe... Whatever, right? We know this. But what we struggle with is the immensity. Amen? What we struggle with is the immensity. We know that God is calling us forth to love one another. We hear it Sunday after Sunday. You hear me say it Sunday after Sunday. We know that God is calling us to love God with all our heart, mind, body, and soul, and God is calling us to love one another as God has loved us because Jesus himself tells us so. But we struggle with the immensity. And we struggle with these structures that we have put in place. And so what Jesus is telling the ancient disciples and is trying to tell us is, don't focus on that which can be destroyed. Focus on that which is eternal. The God spark that Christ has planted within each of us that the Holy Spirit fills us with. That if we are provoked to love that we can share with one another. And I put this image on the screen for us this morning because it's one candle in the darkness. It's one light amidst perhaps destruction or ruin. And that's what Christ calls us to. We don't have to rebuild ruins. We don't have to go out to the masses. We don't have to think that we have to change the entire world, right? We are called to take this spark and love one another. We get to start with one. We get to be provoked to love one. Maybe that one is yourself. That's a start. Then who's next? And who's next? And who's next? That is what is eternal. That is what has changed lives from, not, from the past all the way through the future. That is what is going to change our world. That is what Christ is calling us to when he focuses, refocuses our sight not on the things that can crumble and fall. God forbid, but if this church was gone tomorrow, the building and the structure if a tornado had come through like it never had ever done before on November 18th in Minnesota and it wiped this church out. Are we going to still love one another? Be a church. Carry Christ's message forth. If everything, 
in our life that is temporal falls away? Are we faithful enough? Are we provoked to love enough that we can focus on the eternal? That is what Christ is calling us to. And it's so important that we don't focus on the immensity, but we focus on the singularity, the oneness. One step, one person, one light, one love moving us forward. So today, I hope I provoked you. My goal today was to provoke you. Our goal every day should be to let Christ provoke us to love. Amen. Our next hymn is, I am thine, O Lord, and what a hymn of faith this is, to say indeed, I am yours, God. It's in the Methodist hymnal number 419, and words will be on the screen. I am thine, O Lord. We now come to a moment of joys and concerns of prayer time as we begin with joys and concerns. Are there prayers to lift up in our congregation today?
would like prayers for my grandson who had surgery Friday, but he's doing pretty good. And also plans for the Donald Lau family. Donald passed away on Tuesday, mm. a few days after his 94th birthday. Mm. Lord be with them. I'd like prayers lifted up for two of my neighbors, one facing some health scares and so, and the other facing surgery. May God be with the talented doctors and lift them up for speedy healing. Lord be with them. I ask for prayers for my friend David who has um, recently found out that there's a health scare that he's dealing with. So prayers for David, please. Lord be with him. Other prayers for us, joys or concerns. Prayers, please, for the families of Bill Hecht and Marilyn Brown, both of whom passed this mm. past week. Lord be with them. Other prayers for us to lift up today. Thank you, Madeline. I have a few prayers I would like to lift up that were shared with me. One is I want to pray for Lynn McCarthy, who is going to be having back surgery this week. And so please keep her in your prayers. And she may not ask for it, and this is going to embarrass her maybe a little bit. But if she needs our help, let's give it to her whether she wants it or not. <laughs> I want to lift up in prayer also uh, concerns for our friends and ministries, but just the general people also of Haiti. I don't know if everyone has been paying attention to what's going on down there, but it's getting worse and worse and worse to the point where Doctors Without Borders and other traveling medical groups are actually going to be thinking of removing their people from Haiti because it's just too dangerous to operate down there. And I don't know if you know about Doctors Without Borders, but they, it takes a lot for them to be scared away from a situation uh, or a, for a situation to be too dangerous for them to be a part of. So please be praying for the people of Haiti. Uh, a joy I want to share is that Amanda is not here today because she's in South Dakota and they celebrated her dad's retirement this weekend after 9,000 years of working at the, no, after a, a, a long and storied career of running and managing and really bringing the co-op in Madison, South Dakota, Amanda's hometown to be the amazing thing that it is today and his retirement celebration I heard was a wonderful time last night and so um, just God be with them in retirement and celebration as well. Any other joys or concerns to bring up today? Let us take a moment to pray. Would you all take just a big deep breath with me and let it out however you need to let it out? Lord, we need you. We need you in more ways than maybe we even want to acknowledge. We need you to be our light and our spark. The eternal part of ourselves, God, that works for your glory and love in this world, even though it knows that our eternal is guaranteed. Our light and our strength and our courage to take that love that you have implanted within us, that you have provoked us with, and to share it with the world. To meet the world which maybe would like to provoke us in other ways. Hate or fear or jealousy or greed. A world which wants us to focus on the, bri the brilliant beauty of money or capitalism. A world which wants us to focus on what we can grab and have and keep and hold when we know in our hearts of hearts, God, that none of that is eternal. Only you are. Our soul, our heart, 
the spirit that you have implanted within us, that you provoke us with, that you convict us with, that you love us with. It's in that spirit, God, that we lift up our prayers and the joys and concerns shared today, whether it's health or anxiety of upcoming events, whether it's praying for those who have lost, for those who have lost loved ones or those who are perhaps about to lose loved ones. Whether it's the joy at service well done. Maybe we don't even know, God, what to pray for. And so hear us now in silence as we spend a moment with you, asking you to be with us. you so much God we know what we need to do we know what you are provoking us to do would you be so bold as to speak into our lives and give us the strength and courage the faith and the trust and the love to do it and hear us now God as we lift all of our prayers as we join in our Lord's Prayer song together It's time for offering and a time for our Sunday school children to head off to practice for that Christmas program that will be coming up in just a few weeks. And so have fun practicing for that. We can't wait to see it when it happens and it comes to fruition. The rest of us come to a time of holy offering, which is a time for us to give back out of the graces and places and spaces that God has blessed us. Our offering is monetary indeed. We have plates out on the sides and in the back. If you brought offering, your church thanks you. It does need your support. But our offering is also not just about treasure, but the time and the talents that God employs us to do as well. And so what if we think that we are provoked to love should be our impact on this world? Maybe that should be our holy offering. Let us listen to this moment of reflection as we comp contemplate those things.
And now let us rise as we are able in mind, body, or spirit and join in our doxology together. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God, all creatures here below. Let us join in our prayer of dedication together. God of hope and love, may these gifts and offerings make a difference in this church, in the life of the community we love, in the places we serve, and the people we meet. May these gifts and offerings extend beyond the stones we know and the things we can create to be a balm to a world in need of comfort and a light to a world that has too much darkness. May it begin with you, inspire action in us, and flourish by Christ's name. Amen. Our parting hymn today is Lord Whose Love Through Humble Service. It's in the Methodist hymnal, the big blue one in or around your seat, number 581. Lord Whose Love Through Humble Service. let us go forth then and let us build eternal things. Let us be provoked 
to love our world, that we would build that love in one another, that we would share Christ's light with one another, that we would go with the peace of the Holy Spirit and be provoking our world to positivity and love in Christ's name. Amen.